I'm walking around the corner. I got dope in my mouth. Mm -hmm. Walk past the police, freaking heart drop. And then one of the OGs saw me out there and was like, bro, what you doing out here, man? I like, I'm trying to get it, trying to get this money. You know what I'm saying? I need to bring money back to the house. He was like, bro, you got a, you got a way. You play ball, man. He was like, bro, you ain't supposed to be out here, man. Mm. Go home. That was it for me. That was enough. It was, it was enough that he cared enough about me, you know what I'm saying, to say, like, bro, just you better than that. How to beat the track. A hey, peace family, and welcome back to another episode of How to Beat the Trap. And I want to welcome to the trap my good friends, our special guests, Chris and Yvonne Johnson of Wheeler and Karma, a boutique building design firm based out of here in Atlanta, Georgia. And actually, the, the design firm and general contractors of the building that we're in. Facts. The Legacy Center. That's right. AKA the Black House, the historic legacy center right here in Black Mecca, Atlanta, Georgia. Um, how are y'all today? We're great, man. Awesome. Thank well, you for having wanna, us here. Yes, I want to welcome you to the trap. Yeah. Thank absolutely. you. Let's do it. Yeah. So, family, um, as always, we want to, uh, we define the trap as uh, a program or system that is uh, built to uh, entangle or entice you, but secretly for the benefit of another. Mm. Right. And so I like to bring on entrepreneurs, influencers, amazing overachievers who have beat some of America's most infamous traps. Right. And so those traps can be consist from anything from the college trap to the corner trap to the correctional trap, the corporate trap or even the culture trap. Right. And so we're going to talk yeah. about a few of those today with you guys. And, um, right. you know, you know, I love y'all. Absolutely. And y'all love got so back. much value game and it's amazing spirits. We want to dive into that. Uh, family, uh, Chris and Yvonne are just super dope, right? Like, you, you see they got the trap memo. I didn't even tell them all black, you know. All black. You know how we do. <laughs> Always. You know me, I'm, 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 I'm same clothes for days. I'm trapping the same clothes for days out here. <laughs> um, but yeah, let's dive into it, man. So what we like to do in a trap is I like to really reverse engineer your stories. And I want to talk about who you guys are today. Like, what you're doing today, the amazing things, what you've accomplished. Tell us more about the firm, your family, all that. And then we're going to back that thing up into actually where you started from and, okay. and see what your journey has been like. So we're going to share the mic and ping pong. I know y'all are used to it because y'all do everything together. We're like, a little camera shot, man. I, I, I don't believe it. Oh, y'all done got TV shows <laughs> and pilots and, and all of that. But uh, I'll tell you what, I called Chris on three-way. I, I, I don't even have Yvonne's number, right? You I, don't. I don't think so. Because oh, I'll right. just call him. Yeah, I know. You're always with me. We're always right. together. We I know. You're always on speaker. Right. If I want to talk to her, I just right. call him. You're it's, right. It's, it's yeah. that easy, right? That's true. I mean, you got one email. Y'all share one email. That's it's like true. they are literally, uh, when they say two become one in marriage, yeah. they literally I guess are. We are I guess so. Y'all won one. She That's still like have it. a hard time remembering her last name, though, real sometimes. I did yesterday. <laughs> it's yesterday. So my other last name. Yeah. 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 My maiden name. Oh, last. So, so, so tell everyone, uh, what is Reclaim Karma? And, um, you know, what are you guys doing current day? So Reclaim Karma, like you said, is a boutique design and build firm. We specialize really in kitchens and baths, but we also do commercial construction, project management, um, sure content do. creation. Mm -hmm. We do it. We got our hands in a little bit of everything. everything, but it's all based around residential and commercial improvements, gotcha. right? From a building perspective, you gotcha. know? that's a pretty cool name, Reclaimed Karma. Where'd that come from? So oh when we started this thing, like way back, um, we believe so much in in karma, mm -hmm. right? Of what we put out comes back. Mm -hmm. So we knew. That had to be part of our, our business name. Okay. And when we started, we dealt with a lot of reclaimed materials. So we just joined the two and was like, man, I got a nice little ring to it. You yeah. Know, just interesting. Right. And it just, it stuck, mm -hmm. you know? What, what's reclaimed material, Yvonne? So we utilize a little bit of anything that we can help bring a space to new, but by using older materials. So we might refurbish a, um, a dresser for somebody's kitchen island, or we may come in and use reclaimed wood to finish off a wall in somebody's commercial space. So anything that we can utilize that is vintage or um, antique, we love to do. But then it's kind of morphed over the last couple of years because yeah. now we're really getting in here and reclaiming 
people's dreams and reclaiming our dreams uh, and, you yeah. know, just reclaiming um, people's spaces. Yeah. So. And it's, it's, it's really fitting too, right? Because we we were trying to figure out, like, you know, like what's the mission statement? And when we when we thought of the name, I was like, babe, it's going to be a household name. It's going to be That's all over it. America. She's right, like, right. How? You know what I'm saying? I was right. like, I don't know, but we're reclaiming our whole life. Right. We're yes, reclaiming sure. everything. Oh, everything is getting everything. reclaimed. You know what I'm right, saying? Right. That's it. Yeah. yeah. We're right. reclaiming it. So reclaiming. Oh, I'm reclaiming the trap. That's yeah, it. I'm reclaiming <laughs> the trap. <laughs> trap is all new right That's now. Right, 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 right. And what's so what's so ironic is actually our, our set behind us, this gate is actually reclaimed face. Right. From the fence that we put in yep. when we opened the building. Right. That's exactly. It. You yeah. feel me? Yeah. You got the vibe. Yeah. Give me some of that. Give me some of that. Yeah. 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 So reclaiming everything around here. So talk about some of just the kind of the projects that you guys got going on today. Um, what you're looking forward to. Like, like where, where's the brand going? Like, like you know, there's a lot of people like, obviously I'm a real estate guy. People are interested in fix and flips and, and design decor. Mm-hmm. Tell us about some of the cool things you guys um, have done or are currently doing. Yeah, you want to take that? So we have a lot going on right now. We have this huge building, <laughs> about a 20,000 square foot building that we warehouse are... Space? <laughs> <laughs> warehouse space that we're renovating into something amazing that literally is starting this year, right? So we've got that going on. We also have some um, interior design with another large commercial property. And then we're finishing up some some of our residential um, renovations right now. We have a couple kitchens and baths that we're finishing. And something that you may not know, Jay, because Chris, I don't know if he talks to you much about this, but we do a lot of content creating with Home Depot and oh, well. numerous other brands, but Home Depot is probably one of the largest. Yeah. So we have some... Um, YouTube videos coming out with Home Depot. Oh, and y'all branded, got, branded. You so know. we're having, yeah, yeah. yeah. And we're doing a lot of um, speaking with Home Depot and, yeah. you know, some other um, some other interesting things. So are, around uh, like this time of year, right, we try to scale back on the amount of projects that we're actually physically at. We try to revamp ourselves every year. So we have our annual operating meeting, right? Mm-hmm. And so... Right now, we're really focused on building our intellectual right. properties, right? We've seen everything that you've done yes. um, via the internet and just blow up by teaching and coaching. So now we're working on our own products from that perspective to yeah. put that out into the marketplace. Another vertical. Exactly. <laughs> and then, like Yvonne said, like we just got done filming five webisodes with Home Depot. Mm-hmm. From a pro perspective, where we're actually coaching other pros mm. on some of the um, um, tough tasks they might get or um, requests from other clients, right? We're kind of yeah. walking them through how to get through those things. You wow. Know? Yeah, that, so that's going to be on Home Depot's YouTube channel. That ain't credibility. I don't know what is. You know what I mean? You know I mean, I mean yes. every, uh, you know, every GC, every boutique firm, every design firm right. is, is not getting called by the big boys by to, team, to come right? do a, a webisode. Yeah. We're excited. So that's what we really focus on, right, is just building them receipts. Right. Getting them receipts for everything. Did you guys seek did. that out? Did that fall in your lap? PR? How did that happen? They found us. They found us. Yeah, they found us because of our... Um, content creations that we were right. doing online. A mm-hmm. lot of the online um, networking and things that we were doing, they reached out to us about a few smaller projects. Mm-hmm. And those smaller projects turned into this larger project. Yeah. Um, so this has been our largest one. We're hoping for a season two. two right. Season one will come out, I think, in the next month right. or so. And then we're hoping That's for awesome. a season two. Mm-hmm. And we've got a few other things with Home Depot that are coming down the line as well. So yeah, we shout out to E-Tray Productions. That's yeah. working with us on uh, this other campaign we got. We yeah. got about two campaigns we're working yeah. with Home Depot right now, yeah. and a couple other pending with some other um, some companies. You know, that's but awesome. Yeah, man. yeah. So we're the digging ecosystem, in, man. The mm-hmm. ecosystem, man. The ecosystem, black excellence. Yeah. I love it. Yeah, awesome. but a lot of it came from really listening to you over the last couple of years as well. Chris started coming home and saying, look, we really need to get our intellectual property together and we really need to start thinking outside of the box of just being in um, homeowners' homes or in mm. business owners' spaces. We need to think about another form of income as well. Right. So a lot of that came from... Because, like, you. so I'm going to go completely off. Oh, boy. I know. Go, go for it. Go in the trap. You okay, do what so, you want in a trap. Like, right, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So, like, we did a, we have this thing that we do that's called community karma, mm-hmm. where we use our services 
that we don't charge people mm -hmm. anything for. Mm -hmm. Just that cost of whatever it costs to do the job. So we did this for like a, a retired lady that had like a, a income property in the back of her home mm -hmm. that she needed to get a, a, a renter in, but needed to upgrade it. Right. So we got a call from, I won't say a who, friend. But, yeah, a friend. We got the call <laughs> from... Uh, uh, about helping this lady out. Mm -hmm. So we went out and, you know, figured out how we could design her, her rental property up and get it rental ready so she could make some income, right? And we didn't charge her anything for it. But she demanded, I mean, everything out of us, right? right. So we had to continue to say, it's about karma, baby. <laughs> right, right, it's right. About <laughs> That's the investment. You know what I mean? right. That's the investment. Yes. But the true gift was in the... Older gentlemen, a husband and wife team, they were like in their late 60s, early 70s, 70s, like doing the construction in her home, putting in a painting and putting in floors. Mm -hmm. And I looked, I, was, I looked at her and I said, this will not be us. Yeah. Wow. This will not be us. Because you see so many, you know, contractors that don't understand how to scale and move to that next level right. of actually turning it from it being a owner-operated business right. into an actual profitable, scalable yes. business to where you don't have to be there in order for it to make right. money. Right. Awesome. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And so, like, that was the real That payment. was your karma. That was the karma. And that, and that was the yeah, payment that we got for doing that job was seeing this brother it hurt my heart. Look, I mean, truck breaking down in the in the front yard, you know, trying to figure it out. I'm like, and his wife is in there still painting with him at 70 years old. Mm. It's like, hell no. Okay. That won't be us. <laughs> right, right. That won't be us. So but we, we, we got to get some other, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. some other verticals going on. Yeah. Start, exactly. start using our talents and give some other ways. Yeah. Facts. Awesome. All right, so you guys got uh, all kind of commercial residential yes. projects going on. You're doing community good. Um, you guys have children? Yes. We do. We have yes. we have a son. All right. He's 21. Okay. So he's a young man. Yes. Young man. Yeah. All he's right. in the design industry also, but he focuses more on fashion. Yes. Gotcha. So you got family, you got business, you got businesses, yeah. you got branding, all that going on, right? And um, really are unique in, in this space. And I just love how you guys put your whole thing together and operate with such professionalism. I can say that as a testimony, as a as a client. Um in 20 years in the business, right? You guys really bring a different level to uh, to, to contracting, to GCing, to design, to build, right? Um, so let's go back now. Now it's time to reverse engineer and back that thing up. Um, and we're, we're kind of ping pong. Uh, we'll start with the queen. Um, let's talk a little bit about, you know, not even like recent where this come from in the business, but let's talk about your story. Where did you come from? And what was that upbringing like? Talking about them days when you were stripping. Every light skin pretty woman was a stripper. Diamond. That was the name Diamond. Anyway, okay, so my story. Oh, yeah, let's do it. Yeah. All right. So where'd you grow up? Where'd I'm you start? from I'm from Michigan. Okay. I'm a, I'm from just outside of Grand Rapids, Michigan, in an area called Jenison, Michigan. All right. And my whole, I'm adopted. Okay. And my whole family does not look like me. So okay. um, when I met Chris, it's just a very interesting experience. But anyway, so I grew <laughs> up, I grew up in Jenison, Michigan. Um, when I went to college at Western Michigan University is kind of where I started to see more people that looked like me because okay. there was cool. nobody. So you, so you say not look like you. Are you saying no was, one were they like Asian? Were they Caucasian? They were, like, they were Caucasian. Okay. They are Caucasian. So my oh, whole family is white. white. Family, right? yeah. um, and when I was adopted, at the time that I was adopted, they could not, they didn't know what my nationality was. Mm. So that was interesting because back then when they don't know your nationality back in the day, you're considered a special needs child because there wow. are no, there's sometimes no nationalities that want to adopt you because they don't know what you're going to. And how old were you when like you were adopted? Me. So I was five months and it took five months for them to find a family that um, was willing to look past the fact that my birth certificate said I was Caucasian. 
Man, look Caucasian. So, right. exactly. So You light skin, but you ain't Caucasian. Right? <laughs> exactly. You red, but you ain't exactly. Caucasian. Exactly. <laughs> so, um, I grew up in that household. The most amazing family ever. I yeah, mean, just really, really awesome. Yeah. Um, after college, um, I moved to Detroit, where a lot of my friends were at. And I started working as a probation officer in Detroit. I was okay. hired over Didn't the phone. Didn't know that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I know. So I was actually hired over the phone. I had applied at a million different places to work. No one would hire me because I didn't have enough um, work experience, which is what happens with college. You put all this money into going to college. I was told that it was the way to success. And once I got done with college, I was like, well, a job should fall in my lap. And right. it that's did the, not that's, the, that's what they told you, ain't it? That's what right. they told me. And I thought I was going to make 100 grand a year. I was like, oh, I'm going to graduate. I'm going to make 100 grand a year. And a job's going to fall in my lap. Well, sure. it did not happen like that. So real quick, we, we, mm-hmm. uh, you said we went to West Michigan? I went to Western Michigan University. Okay. Mm-hmm. And you studied what? Criminal justice and sociology. All right. So you knew some, some, some you, you knew some job. I knew. First, I knew I was going to go to law school immediately. Okay. And I made a decision after working at a law firm and seeing that it wasn't exactly what I was seeing on TV, that maybe I need to take <laughs> a pit stop first. So I decided to go into probation. I started applying everywhere. And I called a courthouse in the Detroit area and they answered the phone. They asked me what I wanted. And I said, I just needed their address to send my application in. And they they were like, you want to work here? And I was like, <laughs> sure. You know, anywhere that I can get Detroit? into. Yeah. Well, and this it was a specific area of Detroit that I won't really talk about because okay. it's just, it was an area of Detroit right. that East side, but go ahead. no East one, <laughs> <laughs> that obviously I didn't know no one wanted to work at. So after about five minutes on the phone, they hired me over the phone. I thought I had hit the lotto. And I moved all of my stuff from my cushiony little place I was living at out to this area in Detroit to start working as a probation officer um, in this area of Detroit. And it was a really big awakening. From <laughs> so, a Peace Family Real Estate Pioneer, Jay Morrison, coming to you live from the Black House. Uh, why haven't you got your first of its kind video textbook, excuse me, interactive video textbook experience, the 12-step real estate crash course. This book will make you a real estate power player in real life with over six and a half hours of video lessons with 290 pages of real workbook experiences, tests, quizzes, assessments that give you the skill set, mindset, and formulas needed to dominate in real estate and be a power player in any part of the industry in real life. Homeowner, realtor, wholesale, landlord, flipper, developer, don't matter. You need this book. Your family needs this book. Go tap into the link right now for your for your interactive first of its kind video textbook experience in real life. Tap in. 12stepvideotextbook.com. <laughs> well, I want to talk about that awakening in a second. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now, college, did you get a scholarship? Did you take on loans? Was it paid for by the family? I did get a scholarship. I got a few. She worked the system. So, okay. So when I went to college, because my birth certificate and everything basically says I'm unknown, you know, at this point. Right. So um, when I went to get my scholarships, I was able to get almost every different type of scholarship out Black, there. Black, white, woman, every, <laughs> Hispanic, I mean, you name it, I was checking all the boxes. So <laughs> I got every different scholarship that you can try. think of. Right. I, know. I think I realized that maybe, I don't know, it's probably not the best thing. I went you know, to one of our college scholarship days Mm -hmm. and no one was speaking English. And I remember sitting there thinking, yeah, I, but, (laughs) you know, I checked other and it is possible that I am Hispanic. We didn't know at the time. So anyway, so I got all of these different scholarships Mm -hmm. and um, it was able, you know, it paid for most of our, my school. My parents paid for half. I paid for the other half of what was left. Mm -hmm. And I just, and I came out owing about 
$20,000, which after 20 years ends up being like 30 some thousand dollars, um, which today is nothing. But back yeah, then, you yeah. know, twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000 is a lot of money to owe. Um, today, people are owing $200,000, you know, when they're yeah. coming out of college. Right, but it's for the benefit of you, though. It, it supposedly, say, I guess, right. is what <laughs> they say is supposed to benefit us. And then I, I came out thinking I was going to make all this money. My first job, I was making $27,000 a year which after taxes and your apartment, all of the bills that you have to pay, I was making nothing. I was basically broke again after college, just like I was broke going into college. So I definitely was looking for something else. So probation didn't last that long. Okay. You know, I worked in probation for about seven years um, and it just got burnt out. I actually went into probation to help minority men, because it's the most of who you kind of run into in the court system. Mm -hmm. I went into it hoping to help them stay out of the court system. And I realized really quickly that in order to keep them out of the court system, I would then have to risk my job because the system wasn't set Your job up. was to keep their behinds in. Yes. Because the system the needs system, them in. Exactly. Because they need that, 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 that labor. Exactly. CCA, baby. So it was, it was really tough. It only took me a couple of years to realize that it wasn't where I needed to be because I wasn't able to, able to make the changes that I wanted to make without losing my job. You wow. know, so... Um, I made a decision that I needed to look for something else. I actually got involved with um, uh, direct sales and network marketing companies. Mm -hmm. And at a young age, I became a um, someone that was doing very well in network marketing and direct sales. So I started, I decided, I was um, maybe 20, 20, 4, 25, when I really started making good money in network marketing. Okay. Um, so it walked me off my job. And as soon as I had doubled my income at my job, I made sure that I was making enough to leave. Once I doubled that income, I was like, okay, I'm out. So then I, you know, put in my two weeks notice. And I had a friend that was in the Atlanta area that was leading a network marketing company in Atlanta. So I packed up all of my stuff and I drove down to Atlanta to start working with him. And I said I was going to be here for a couple months. I might go back to Michigan. And then I ran into Chris Johnson. That's right. And I've never... All right. Let's put, back. Let's, pause, let's put a pin in your story real quick. Let's put a pin in it right there. Can Chris work exactly. some magic or something? That's it. <laughs> you know, that talk game was stupid. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Mouthpiece. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. All right. All right. So, King Chris, um, let's walk us up to that point now. We're starting with your beginning and your journey into this story. Oh, man. So what was your upbringing like? Did you, did you have an ethnicity on your birth certificate? <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> they call it an N, but it said black. You know what I'm saying? All right. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, no, my whole family is from here in Atlanta. Shouts out Hollywood Road, Flipper Temple, Jonesboro. That's like um, uh, McDonough. South Atlanta, like, that's all my family roots, but I came up on the north side, so okay. don't y'all start saying, like, I'm not from Atlanta, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I, didn't, I wasn't yeah. born at Grady, and I didn't go to one of the Atlanta public schools, but I'm from this thing, man, so don't, let's do that. Right. Um, <laughs> so I guess really kind of started, like, in high school, man, like, right before I say my junior year in high school, my partner JJ was killed, and then another one of my partners, Terrence, was killed. Right. And I was like flunking every single class, playing football, mm. you know, had a had a good future in front of myself. But I was in in the way of myself, you know, just running the streets in, in Marietta, just trying to be like the dope boys was who we all looked up to that yeah. we wanted to be. You know what I'm saying? So um, when they got killed, man, I was like, Yo, I got to do so. I got to get out of here. Now, what year in school were you? I was a junior. Gotcha. Yeah. So I was flunking everything. We went to my guidance counselor and they were like, you, you should just drop out and get a GED. And my mom was like, my baby going to college, right? My right. baby going to college. So I'm like, yeah, I, I got to get out of here. Right. So I went back and took all my freshman and sophomore courses over mm. my senior year 
and graduated high school with a 1.6. Dude, <laughs> boys. 1.6 GPA, baby. And got a full ride scholarship to college with a 1.6. That is the real point of how the system works that he got a full ride scholarship for football Athletics. with a 1.6 GPA. So they rounded yes. the six to a two. Plus five. <laughs> <laughs> right? And so, I mean, I had, like, a lot of colleges recruiting me, and they would all look at my transcript and be like, damn, son, what you been doing? And the one college that took a, a chance on me, BSU, Vidalsa State, what's up, Blazers? <laughs> I was like, I'm gone. I'm out. Right. Right? So got down there and— um, What position in football? Fullback. Okay. Yeah, fullback. Yeah, we'll that thing. Uh. yeah I was 254.5, running the 4.5. Doing my thing. Yeah, 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 we moving. Yeah, we moving. Truck. So, um, they used to call me oh, War Horse is what they call me. Okay. Yeah, Workhorse. Okay. Workhorse is what they used to call me. Okay. So, got down to build all... That's very important. It's <laughs> very important. You couldn't even remember which one it was. War Horse. I said it wrong. Workhorse. Something. Let me okay. finish my story. Okay, go ahead. Okay, all right. So, I get down to build all the... Um, start kind of slipping back into the same stuff because everybody that was down there was like D1 caliber athletes, but was fools, was knuckleheads. All the right? 1.6s. Yeah. All so, the 1.6s you know, together. We was down there, like, we was balling, but we was wilding out. I mean, it was, yeah, we had a good time. So my sophomore year down there, I get, I come up with a baby, right? Okay. You <laughs> came up with one. I came up with a baby, right? <laughs> fell in your lap. <laughs> fell in my lap. Yeah. So I ended up having my son, which, like, changed my whole trajectory at that point in time, right? So I was on academic probation. I found out I'm about to be a father. Okay. And she's like, um, I got to keep this baby, and we get married. So I'm like, all right, let's do it. You know, I'm not going to run away from my responsibilities. Let's man up. Let's 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 do it, right? So I get married as a sophomore. In so this is with Yvonne or not with Yvonne? No, she's no, not with Yvonne. Okay, I just, I just want to make sure. Still at Western Michigan University. Okay, I just want to make sure our years is all lined yeah. up. Yeah, all right, all right. Out. Yeah. So, so, okay, boom. You made your way into college. Yeah. Was running around Marietta. Partners got killed. You got some fools over in, in, in college. In college. Um, during that time, you know, the streets, the dope boys is all out there. Had, did, did you participate in any of the street activities or were you just lingering around? Uh, I did, but I suck, man. I suck at the trap. I suck at the trap. You know, I got fronted my first zone. I was like, this is it. You know, I got my first OZ. This is it. I barely made that flip back. And I was like, nah, I can't do that. And then well, one time, in, one, of, one of my partners, one of my teammates in front of me, like um, two doves. He was like, look, you know, I got a little bit left off of this cookie. I'm going to give you, this, you know, these two doves right here. You flip it, come back. We can re-up, right? And I sold the crack to one of my partner's moms, and I didn't know, I didn't know it was his mom. Mm. And I was like, yo, why did, y'all didn't tell me that was uh that was Shango mom? He was like, hey, bro, that's, that's what this shit is. I couldn't sleep, bro. I couldn't, wow. I was like, I'm just, I'm not, I'm not made for that. And I walked around the corner, like I had, I had yay in, in my mouth, right? Walk around the corner, I got dope in my mouth. Mm-hmm. Walk past the police, freaking heart drop. And then one of the OGs saw me out there and was like, bro, what you doing out here, man? I like, I'm trying to get it, trying to get this money. You know what I'm saying? I need to bring money back to the house. He was like, bro, you got you to gotta wait. You play ball, man. He's like, bro, you ain't supposed to be out here, man. Like, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, this ain't for everybody, dog. This is not for everybody, bro. And I don't, I don't see you out here like that, man. You ain't got to be out here. Mm. Go home. That was it for me. That was enough. It was it was enough that he cared enough about me, you know what I'm saying, to say, like, bro, just you better than that. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right, right. Which made me always I mean, I didn't like it made me, it made me know that that wasn't the path that I wanted to go down. But I tried again. Of course I tried again. Of course. But I sucked. It's a trap. I, I tried sucked. The trap I, I sucked. I sucked at it. I've always I suck at doing illegal things, bro. I've that, never that's just, actually a great thing. You know right. Right. <laughs> First time I ever stole, I stole some uh some Emmett Smiths. The police came to football practice and picked me up. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like, I was like, like hey, hey, everybody else wins. He's got good. And then they come and get me. Right. You know, people was writing letters to my mom's back in high school. Like, your son is running around with game. I'm like, why is everybody snitching on me? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, 
So I suck at illegal, illegal activity. That's the last thing. time I tried was I, I got into a wreck with my car in college, and it was like a nice, clean 79 Lincoln. Mm -hmm. Nice. But the, the front of it was, was, was broken up, and one of the, the dope boys down in Belosta always wanted the, the car. He would always offer to buy it from me. So when I got in the wreck, he was like, man, I'll take that off your hands, bro. It's like, I'll give you $500, man, in two ounces. Right. Right. <laughs> right. I'm, 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 I'm Try it again. Yeah, you know. I smoked half of it. You know what I'm saying? So like I just I suck I sucked at it. You know, it, it wasn't my calling, bro. I didn't have that's that. a good thing. Yeah. That's a good thing. I sucked at it. My conscience, I guess, was I don't know, bro. It's just maybe it's right. church. So upbringing. so so son. Yeah, so transitions mm -hmm. to son So I have my I have my son, I have my wife. Um my passion was to be in radio. Mm. So I was, uh, I was, that was my degree was communications with an emphasis in radio and radio sales. Okay. So I end up landing a job at a gospel radio station, right? My, okay. my, my junior okay. year. Okay. All right. Okay. A extra fraternity yeah, gospel yeah, radio. Right. So, All right. But so I always thought that, that is good. Like, <laughs> music is my passion, right? Music is my passion. So I always yeah. thought that like I was going to go the path of like ludicrous, right. you know, I get on the radio. I spit these bars, boom, and that's it. Right. I'm a platinum recording artist. But I'm in a gospel radio station, you know, at like six in the morning on a Sunday, just leaving the club, you know. <laughs> hey, 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 this is WJM, Sunshine 1150, the best in good gospel music, you know. Right. I'm like, ah, I'm sleeping yeah, yeah. between sets. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Good so, so, I know. I remember that like, like, like it was yesterday. So, um, Graduated and tried to come from a minor market up to a major market up to Atlanta, right? I'm trying to use whatever plugs I got to try to get into the station. I'm like, oh, yeah, you work, but you got an intern. Right. It's like, yo, for real? Well, how much that pay? <laughs> Nothing. I got a wife and a child at home, man. Right. You know, I need some bread. So one of our neighbors was like, hey, I can get you on it at Pepsi. It's like, cool. So I started out as a tip at Pepsi. And um, just worked my way up in the ranks at Pepsi to get into uh, food service sales. I became like the top 1% of the 1% of the world in sales at wow. Pepsi. You know, I did, my, I did my thizzle over there. Okay. You know? Right. Um, and during that time, we met. Like, she didn't know I had dual personalities. So when we met, I was I had my suit on. I was you your, your Pepsi person. Yeah, I was my yeah. Pepsi personality. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? The next day, I was like, "Yo, I'm performing tomorrow night. Come holla at me." You right. know? Yeah, I'm in the trap. You know right, what I'm saying? Right, right. Yeah. Who is this? Exactly. But it kind of yeah. turned on. I think right. She was like, "He's good, man. He's bad, and he's bad, and he's good." No, no, no. So, so you were in sales. You were in sales essentially, yeah. right? Network yeah. marketing. Yeah. So both kind of two sales yeah. people, two sales, making yeah. your own money. You now yeah. meet in, in, in Atlanta. Mm -hmm. You kind of like bad boy turn half good. Okay. So the way we met, we met at a uh, at a function here in Atlanta. I went up to her. Uh, actually, my partner had went up to her first and got shot down. And I was like, yes. So then I went and... That could have changed everything. That could have changed everything. <laughs> right. Right. Glad he bombed. <laughs> so then I went and started talking to her. And being that she was in recruiting mode 24-7, mm -hmm. she was like, yeah, we can exchange numbers. You know, I'm trying to yeah. holler. He's like, yeah. She's trying to get me to a meeting to put me in her business. <laughs> right. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so. He was a customer. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. I was a customer. Yeah. She was like, he's broke. I mean, all her friends got Lambos, Rolls Royces, you know. Right. I'm in like a, so by this time, I don't want y'all to think that I was cheating on my wife when I met her. By this time, oh, I had, yeah. by this true. time, that's true. When my son was around like four, mm -hmm. a lot of things were going on. You know, we got married at 19. Stuff wasn't just, mm -hmm. wasn't working, mm -hmm. you know. So eventually she just, she left me and my son. You know what I'm saying? Um, she had her own demons. I had my own demons. And we were trying to figure life out. Right. Still you know learning, what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yourself. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. yeah. So at this point, I'm a single father when I meet Yvonne. Right. So I think my mama probably had my, my boy that night. You know, I'm out. She's recruiting me into her business. And then from there, I wasn't I didn't really realize it, but I was in a place of de depression, bro. You know mm. what I'm saying? I was like, I've been sales. 
Um, actually, I was on probation at that time. <laughs> and the story goes out. <laughs> I didn't even think you had a license. I didn't have a license. You didn't have a license. I didn't have a license. Was I was broke. using I was using the Mountain Dew van because my truck had my truck had broke down on me. I told my boss like, "Hey, my, my truck is in the shop. Can I borrow one of the the, um, the vehicles yeah. to get back and forth?" I ain't got a DUI. Gosh, so I didn't have any ales. But in order for me to work, I had to get from customer to customer. So I ended up finessing my way in to use one of the company vehicles for a year. I drove around a Mountain Dew van. <laughs> no license. <laughs> no license. But that was good cover, right? Because right. it was a corporate vehicle. Who's Dang. pulling a corporate vehicle? Exactly. Right. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Run my place, I'm good. Right. Right. Yeah, so I rode around in a Mountain Dew vehicle for like a year. <laughs> and around that time, I, I, I met Yvonne. And I was in a place of depression. I would just go work out, drink, go to sleep. Mm-hmm. spend time with my son, you know. And then when when she was recruiting me, she was like, if you wanna, if you wanna date me, you gotta come to one of my meetings. I'm like, I'm I'm not coming to one of the pyramid meetings, bro. I'm not doing it. So she was like, you should just come on a Friday night. It's just personal development. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that was when I was first introduced to um Jim Rohn, um uh Les Brown, you know, Tony Robbins. Think and Grow Rich. Right. Um, and I would just sit there. It was like church for me, bro. I was like, yo, I ain't never heard nothing like this before. Yeah. Like, that's amazing. So I ended up joining the business. Gosh, yes. Now I'm selling juice too with Yvonne, right? <laughs> she wasn't really paying attention to me, right? Because the like the first time I went, she was like, um, well, do you see an opportunity? I was like, not in there, but right here. Right. <laughs> Yeah. All kind of hours. All time. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so we went out to eat, and eventually I had to start coming. I got I got to be part of the culture, right? Mm-hmm. And just, just so, inundated so myself. So at this point, neither of you, we not, I didn't hear anything about any uh, hammers, paintbrushes, hard hats. Nothing. We don't know no. nothing about that. N- none of that. Y'all no. just... No. We don't know nothing Now you're both that. network marketing juice sellers. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> sales. Sales. It's just sales, okay. right? Yes. Uh, so for me, like, I always knew, I remembered one pivotal moment in my life, like, my mom said, I want a Rolls Royce. And I remember as a as a young, young man saying, I'm going to buy my mom a Rolls one day. Mm-hmm. Don't know how I'm going to get there, but I'm going to get there. I always just felt like I was supposed to be on a bigger stage. I felt like, you know, my life had a bigger purpose you know, that I was designed for. Mm-hmm. And so I didn't know how I was going to get there, but when I started getting around these people, I'm like, oh, this might be it. Right, my, it's my place. Yeah, this might be it. It wasn't the zones. It no. wasn't the, yeah. Nah, <laughs> nah. That wasn't it. But the personal development felt right. It was the juice. And so I had never traveled. She'd been traveling all over the world, you know what I'm saying? So my wife was opening my mind and exposing me to to, to new things. Okay, wife. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> And um, we just started building between each other, right? Yep. Yeah. So, so where the are uh, you guys are building, right? Build something together. Where the introduction or decision come in to all right? We're in this network marketing, essentially entrepreneurs, but now we're going to take it and build our own, not market other businesses, mm-hmm. other brands. We're going to build our own brand, own business, and particularly in this um, design and build space. How about mm-hmm. that? So we after we got married. We bought a home together and Chris found this home because it was a house that was in the area that he grew up in and he used to drive he used to ride his bike through the neighborhood and he was cut through PBR. <laughs> <laughs> driving through the neighborhood Remember one that? day and saw the house that he wanted us to have. And he started dreaming about this home. Really, he started stalking the home. He would sit in the driveway all day and all night at this person's home. I believe the manifestation. (laughs) I know the neighbors were like, he is crazy. That's it. Yes. So, and he was telling me that he wanted this home and I hated the house, but he wanted this house and he loved the pool. He loved everything about this house. So, Finally, I just said, look, if this is where you feel like we should be, then we'll get the house. So we bought this house and we were house poor because once we moved in, it was double the size of our previous space that we were living in. We didn't have the furniture to furnish it. And everything I wanted, I was showing him from like restoration hardware and all these different stores where everything was 10 grand for a table. And he was like, there's no way we have no money for this. We got Um, it. You know, and at the time, 
So you got that Ernest e. Morrison taste. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, right. exactly. That's why we get along so well. I know exactly. Get up out of here with that. Exactly. Here with that. exactly. exactly. But, but somehow you both moved into your home and she got all of that. Oh, no, she you. did. Don't give me that. Don't give me fool. No, 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 no. That's not loud. It's podcast. It happened like that. Anyway, she got a portion. I think I didn't get any, anything I was asking for. Right. So one day I was um, making a decision to walk away from network marketing. It was taking me too much away from home. And now I had a son that I was helping to raise and um, I was just burnt out. And he came to me and he said, Yvonne, we keep going from one company to another company and all these network marketing companies. When are you going to um, bet on us as a mm. family? Mm. And he said, I just want you to grab a glass of wine and some paint brushes and go out and paint. And I would sit in the garage because he's like, you are stressed out. You need to just de-stress he knew we needed furniture. I had been researching back then about how you could paint your own furniture and you could get pieces from around town. So we would drive through different areas of Atlanta where people had put their furniture This is like out. a fairy tale story. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> hey, where y'all read this at, for real? Seriously. In life. Right? So, in real life. In real right? life. In real right? life. So yeah. he would come home with furniture pieces and he's like, I think this would look great here or here. And all you need to do is paint it. So I took like an online like YouTube class about painting furniture. And I started painting furniture. Um, I would paint the furniture. And then if it was something I couldn't paint, but we needed to build, Chris just volunteered and said, hey, instead of spending $10,000 on this table, I think that I could build a table that's just like this. Mm. And I was like, you've got to be kidding me. I didn't believe he could do we it. We went to the store and I, I touched some of this, the mm -hmm. furniture. I was like, I can do this. For this? Right. It's like, it's really what? For this? Yeah. It's like, yeah, I can build that. Yeah. She was like, what? I didn't so, have no tools, nothing. Have you had prior experience building things nothing. before? No. no, not at all. Because it was a man stuff. Like, yeah. I can build this. I mean, like, I play with, I always related back to two things. I played with a ton of Legos when I was little. So I was always, like, Game building offense. something, creating <laughs> something. You know what I'm saying? Right. And then I think it's ancestral also because my, my grandfather was like a contractor for the Corps Army of Engineers. Mm. And he was a brick mason, a carpenter, everything. So, you know, shouts out to to, uh, to Big Henry. Right. Right. You know what I'm saying? Lineage. Um, exactly. Mm -hmm. for, for for planting those seeds early and learning those trades and just putting it in the genes. Right. You know right. So, so I want to stop real quick. When you talked about, um, Chris, when you said, hey, go paint, yes. was that about paint? Because I want... Because um, I want you to relieve stress or get out of my face, or is that paint because you're trying to get me in trouble? <laughs> <laughs> we in the trap. Hey, right. What happens in the trap stays in the trap. trap. <laughs> <laughs> or, or was it like, hey, listen, this is our route to getting some furniture. I want you to paint, and I want to ask you that. And then also, when you talked about, uh, when are we going to bet on? I want you to bet on mm -hmm. on us. Uh, I just wanted to comment like that is. Um, you were thinking legacy at that time, right? right? Think much about, about your last name and building some some brand equity and value Absolutely. for you as well as other companies. But so, so what was your your mind frame at that time? Definitely just relieving stress. That was the main thing, right? It's right. just like, take hey, this look, paintbrush. Yeah, yeah, take this paintbrush. It goes a bottle of wine. Just chill out. You know, I'm working a job. You know, we'll we'll survive. Right. Right. Get in there and figure it out. Because I know for me, like my release is music. Mm -hmm. So when I have an opportunity just to get by myself, you know, and think and just relax, boom, you have eureka moments, right? right. You had the aha moments like, oh, we can do this. We can we can yeah. do this. So I was like, just go in the garage, just figure it out. Plus, we need some furniture. Right. So, <laughs> right. Plus that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So get the work. And he knew I was enjoying it. Like yeah. I was enjoying creating these pieces for our home. Mm -hmm. And he knew I was hating the business I was right. in at that time. And he just said, just take a step back from what you're doing with your business. Go Enjoy sit and yourself paint. Believe. And exactly. And I think, I think in the back of my mind, like what she's not saying is like she would record everything that she was doing also. And mm -hmm. it started like a little blog as a way also to kind of release stress and was posting on Facebook and people was giving props for, for stuff, you know? So I was like, you know, just keep, keep doing it. And at that time, like reclaiming furniture was just becoming popular. 
Okay. Right, so I'm like, that might be a space we could kind of get into. Maybe right. make some little money off the internet. Uh, you know, I don't know. It was right. all kind of new, right? So I'm like, mm-hmm. yo, just let's just do us. Mm-hmm. Let's just gotcha. do us, you know. Um, and I think she posted, you posted a, a table that I made. So we needed a coffee table, and there was a pallet that we found when we were riding on the side of the road, and. I built the coffee table out of it. And she mm-hmm. posted, like, oh, look what my husband made for me. And somebody so replied. So you took the wood from the pallet? Yeah. From the side of the road, yes. I took the pallet. I went and got uh, a four-by-four, four, mm-hmm. cut that bad boy up, made some legs. Mm-hmm. She painted the legs. I stained the table. At that time, I was starting to learn some woodworking. Gotcha. Where are right. you learning from? YouTube. YouTube <laughs> University. Yeah. YouTube yeah. University. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. So started to learn a couple little skills. I bought one tool, which was a, a nail gun. I was mm-hmm. putting together everything nails. with one little nail gun. It was yeah. nails all over the house, right? right. <laughs> shot out. It was a real shot out with the nail gun. Right. So built the built the coffee table. Mm-hmm. She posted it. And like in the comments, somebody was like, is that for sale? Hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> so I literally came home one day and the coffee table that was supposed to be in our living room was gone. Gone. And Chris had That's my kind of guy. <laughs> <laughs> he had sold it and then I could see things shifted. It went from wine and a paintbrush to, get, here's a paintbrush. Go get in the garage. We need to paint something else. <laughs> like, Bro, how much that first item sell for? 300 <laughs> 300 for a pallet. He, a, so he's calculating. For a pallet, right. He's like, if I do 10 of these. I was like, I found my dope. <laughs> <laughs> I found it. I found it. <laughs> yes. So. Yeah, I started doing the map. I was like, yo, we can sell. Ooh, How long did it take you to, to build it? I don't that know. was probably, I don't know. A weekend, if you Maybe a weekend. You know, so yeah. he's like, I put three days in, no money in. And we sold it for $300. Yeah. He was like, oh, it's over with. I'm thinking mass production now, yeah, right? right, right, right. Like, we're going to be in furniture stores everywhere. I know. We're and I was like, everywhere. I just had my paintbrush. Like, what are She's you like, you're me. Did you have your name at the time? The company like, name, everything karma? No. Were you thinking no. about that? Okay. No. no. Just y'all. Just husband and wife. Yeah. 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 Just figuring grinding. It out. Gotcha. out the garage. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Two-car garage. You know what I'm saying? So we started, so that started to scale. We started to paint more and more things and we started to use our sales and marketing tools to put it online. I started taking classes of, you know, how to use Craigslist to sell furniture. And that's when Craigslist was huge. Huge. Mm -hmm. So we started selling a lot of pieces. And next thing you know, I was bringing in the income that I was I used to have with network marketing. I was bringing that in with our furniture pieces. Wow. And Chris was starting to build larger pieces and doors and large tables. And it just, and then we got, I would say that we, we got our first big order. So there was a design firm that saw us graphic online, design firm, yeah. a graphic design firm, and they ordered like, I don't even know. It's like Five, Five, six, six tables. big tables. Mm-hmm. And that was like our first big order where we saw a really big profit and we had to figure things so out. Tell us how much. We want to know in the trap. Was it like remember. five grand maybe? Whatever it was to us, we were that was rich. A lot. Yeah, right. it was like five thousand dollars. It was like a thousand dollars a table, and we didn't spend any money on the product. So right. it just took the time. So to most of the do inventory it. and product was was free, mm-hmm. except for some paint. It was all yeah, salvaged. Paint yeah. and maybe like the legs. So I mean, like each table, we probably had. I don't know, $50 into yeah, it? Maybe. And we were making maybe a thousand dollars off of the table. And I did, that's and, a flip. And what was mm-hmm. yeah, where I'm from, that's a flip. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and what was so crazy about it, like my skills wasn't that good, but because it was all about reclaimed materials, it's supposed to look Re- rough, <laughs> rough <laughs> and edgy and not perfect. Right. <laughs> Perfectly exactly. imperfect. Right, right. right. What, you know, exactly. and it like it was on go. For an experienced carpenter, that is it was yeah. on go. <laughs> really great. It was on go. Yeah. Yep. So we started to... And what um, year was that? This was 2013, Four, 14, 14. Somewhere in there. 13, 14. Yeah. yeah. Because yeah. we had just bought our home. Mm-hmm. And as we were working with the furniture... Um, and starting to make money, I said, Chris, remember how you told me that we could do some renovations in our home? Mm-hmm. And he was like, what do you want to do? Can we do the basement, his man cave? And I was like, no, I want to get the kitchen done. Like, mm-hmm. I want to get this kitchen done. So that's kind of what moved us into our design and build 
company right. is we were going around and putting furniture in people's homes and supplying furniture to people. People were ordering from us, but we started this renovation in our home. Mm-hmm. We hired a guy that was in our neighborhood that we saw working in the neighborhood. He was he was a black guy. We Young were brother. so excited mm-hmm. that he looked like us and that we could employ him mm-hmm. and that we could get, you know, we could give him some business mm-hmm. and we employed him and it just wasn't, it just didn't work out that very, it didn't work out very well. So it worked out. I almost yeah. got locked up. Yeah. So we employed. <laughs> it, it, it went yeah. south. Yeah. So basically we had bad. a really, we, we, it was our fault. We knew that this contractor probably wasn't a great contractor after he offered to renovate our kitchen for $4,800, $4,800 to renovate the whole, our the whole thing. entire kitchen. And we were well, like, we didn't know. Perfect. Perfect. Right, right. And we gave them the $4,800. And the deal was like, hey, I'm handy. I want to learn how to yeah. do these things. So I'll be your labor. Just tell me what you need done mm-hmm. and I'll, I'll do it. But Buddy was showing up at like 12, leaving, leaving at, at two. 2. You know, it's it just, wouldn't come one day. Just his worker, one of his workers was who was picking him up. Then he had to go leave and pick up his kids. So it was just, and it was like yeah. Christmas time and we had opened walls and had everything just blown out. He was like, well, you got to get these cabinets custom made, which we didn't, but we didn't know that at the time. Right. And then we had electrical running everywhere. We had a temporary wall up. He was trying to tell me how to how to hold our house up our with like a, a self-made beam. Right? <laughs> I was like, all right, bro, that's what you say. You know, right, like, right. just be a... It was it's our fault. Our the fault. more we listened to ourselves tell this story, the more we realized like it was us. Right. It wasn't him. It was, it was us. us. But it was God working yeah. his own magic, right? right. So yeah. it's like Christmas Eve, and I say, hey, man, like, we're going out of town. My mom is going to be here to look after yeah. the, the pets in the house. The house is we got to get this beam up, man, because I can't just have her in here. With just, temporary walls. Yeah, with temporary walls. Living crazy, bro. Right. You know, let's get this beam up. So he's like, all right, I'm going to come through. I was like, all right, cool. I called him. I said, hey, look, I'm running my son to the barbershop. It's five minutes away, right around the corner. The door is unlocked. Just go in, get to work. I'll be right back. So I dropped my son off. I'm pulling back in the neighborhood. I knew he was working at the neighbor's house because I saw this little bitty sports car over there, right? right. Contracted with a sports car. So he was, I saw a sports car over there. Yeah. I pull in. He was pulling out. I call. I was like, hey, bro, uh, what are we doing? He's like, oh man, I, well, I came, nobody was there, so it's Christmas Eve, man. I gotta, I gotta, I gotta roll. You forgot that phone call? Well, I told you I'll be right back. Yeah. And the door open? Yeah. And that's when, that's when my daddy came out of me. You know what I'm like, saying? He playing with me. Playing oh, with yeah, we was threatened. You know what I'm saying? It was a lot of some bad words that was said at the time. Understood. Anybody so I honest? knew that he wasn't coming back. Yeah. So we no longer have a contractor. Our house is tore up from the floor up, and we had to figure it out. So Chris was like, I can renovate the whole kitchen. I figured it out. It's like, okay. Shouts out YouTube University. Yeah. Went and bought some books also. Yeah. Right. And he started and was renovating like, our this kitchen. This ain't even the right beam. You know what I'm saying? Right, right. Yeah. Bogus. So figured that out. Brought a lot of people over to the house. Different contractors. Who laughed at us. Who laughed, laughed at us. Out, but the thing help. is, it's like when they would come in, they would be like, bro, why are you doing it like this? I mean, they was just... Dogging bashing us. Bashing us. Yeah. Dogging us. Yeah. But when they was dogging us, they didn't realize... They were giving me jewels because they were telling me oh, you should have did it yeah. like this. You should have did it like this. Yeah. And I was making mental notes like, oh, okay, that's how you do it. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay, that's how you do so it. So that was your, your second college education. Exactly. There you go. An expensive one. Yeah. yeah. So <laughs> in the meantime, we got a phone call from Cass one day. Right. So um, one of our friends, Cass, called Cass us Beatles. and she asked us what we were doing. We were probably fighting in the background about this kitchen. And she started laughing. And she said, this is like this a is TV hilarious. show. This is so funny. You guys are in it. Like, it's a hot mess. You know, this is so great. And that turned into her calling us like a month later. And she said, remember how I told you about that TV show that I thought you guys should be doing in your home? I was like, yeah, Cass, you know, this is our real life. And she said, well, I have these people that want to talk to you about possibly doing a TV show about what's happening in your home. So she was like, whatever they ask you, just say yes. Yeah. 
<laughs> so we okay. got on a Skype car call cool. with the production company, mm -hmm. and they started asking us all these questions about building homes and renovating homes, and we were just like, yes, 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 yes. yes, yeah, yes, yes. yes. We do that yes, too. That's yeah. what we do. All of that. That's what yes. we do. And that turned into... That turned into us being on the DIY network. Yeah, so we um, had a pilot on the DIY network. Which renovating somebody's that home. That was the first customer that we ever had was on national television. How to beat this up. Yeah, man. Yeah. yeah. So that 30 minute um, pilot. pilot, which ended up being like a commercial for us, um, changed everything. So really, our contractor changed everything. That little bit of money we paid him that he ran off with, best money spent. Right. Getting that pilot. He, he would did his job and just done it. Right. You guys he have no out. show. He exactly. ran off on the plug. He didn't even know he was he the plug. Know. He didn't know. He didn't know. The show aired for 30 minutes, um, mm -hmm. three times. Yeah. Um, and We had people from South Carolina calling us to do work. You know, just people like, from around the country. Right. But at the time, it was just not really our time. It wasn't our time. But here, but, so, but here's but here's where the blessing is, though, right? And this is where Daryl comes in. Mm -hmm. You know Big Daryl. Mm -hmm. So when we're doing the sizzle for the show, for the pilot, we're, we're walking through the Marietta Square. And this whole time, we're like, man, we got to find somebody to help us. Do this. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm like, let's start doing it. We got to find somebody else to do this right here. Right? Yeah. <laughs> we don't know how to do this, but, you know, we said I, yes. So, just, know. Uh, you know, got to yes. make a way. Right? Right. So, Daryl is in the middle of a project. And he walks out. He's like, man, what y'all doing? It's like, man, we're shooting a, a, a little sizzle for a show. And I was like, what do you do? He was like, oh, I'm a general contractor, man. I was like. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so I get his card, right? I get his card, and I call him like maybe two weeks later. Like, hey man, we got this little show kind of going on, man. We need a general contractor mm -hmm. on on set, man. Is something you would be interested in doing? We'll pay you. But yeah, it'll be fun. So, in the pilot, like he's basically telling kind of me what to do, kind of telling us what to do. Right. And I'm learning the whole time, right? Right. So he becomes... Yeah, apprenticeship on, exactly. on national TV. So he becomes yes. my my mentor, mm -hmm. right? And is the one that's has helped me get my GC license. Wow. Uh, from just that little that interaction, interaction that one day. Shout out there to SPM Solutions. Love yeah, you, brother. Appreciate yeah, that. It just be happiness sometimes, right? We put yeah. yourself in, in, yes. in, 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 the, in the right places. So you guys went from that accidental mm -hmm. uh, construction from... Organic, just reclaimed yep. renovations of, of, of a personal material, mm -hmm. uh, and then all the way to now, uh, Home Depot commercials yeah. and know, right? major commercial projects Crazy. and booked, mm -hmm. busy and blessed. Yeah, yeah. I, and all that. <laughs> I would say, Jay, like the one thing about us is like we believe in us. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I think that's probably what the most special thing is about us. We don't always act like it sometimes, both of us. But in general, we we believe in us. Right. And when we speak something, it it comes to pass. So yes. we're very careful about what we put into the universe. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Crazy story, right? So I'm a YouTube freak. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I'm laying in the bed. I'm looking at this dude talking all this real estate and stuff like that. I'm oh, like, yo, yeah. I got to get with this dude. I was like, I might take this dude classes, man. He's saying, you know, oh, okay. are you doing corner classes and stuff, yo? I'm like, yo, <laughs> I need to link up with this dude, right? Right. Yeah. So, you know, I just like, that would be awesome. And then I, I found out, I was like, oh, he's in Atlanta. I was like, that's what's up. Yeah, I'm going to link up with this dude, mm -hmm. all right? So then Cass has the cooking show. Right, yeah. I don't even think you realize this. Cass had the cooking show, and it got the first scene, the first um, shooting location got canceled, so they filmed the cooking show in our kitchen. Mm -hmm. Right, Gina Neely's. Mm -hmm. I come downstairs. Who's sitting at our dining room table? But Jay, because you were being interviewed, right? By Gina Neely. Yeah. Exactly. I didn't even. I was just like, "What's up?" He was like, "What's up?" I was like, "Oh yeah, it's getting close." Yeah. <laughs> I was like, yeah. "It's it's." The ether is talking to me. The karma is you know, real. The karma is it's getting close. Wow. And then fast forward a year later, and we're walking with y'all in this building. 
Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Same goes with sitting in right now. Bro. Exactly. From, from laying in bed YouTube. It's crazy. Exactly. Yeah. Well, it's not even crazy. No, no, no. no that's it's right. amazing. It's amazing. amazing. It's, it's amazing. amazing. We got to be careful about, again, manifesting the words you put in the universe. And we can't put crazy out there unless we crazy. Facts. And we ain't crazy. Facts. It's, 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 amazing. it's amazing. So I want to do what we call a trap analysis real quick. So oh um, family, we see that Chris and Yvonne of Reclaim Karma have uh, Yvonne went through the corporate trap, going through probation, uh, finding her way into entrepreneurship, right? Going to probation first for purpose. Mm-hmm. Yes. Looking to change the condition of, of, of our men, but yeah. saw the correctional trap through the probation, saw um, the culture trap, the corner trap, yeah. as the results of that through probation, got into entrepreneurship, and then from entrepreneurship, stumbled, one, different levels of entrepreneurship. So entrepreneurship as an independent contractor, but still working for promoting someone else's brand. Right. Yeah. Right? They got the brand equity, you're still making some money. And then um, organically came into um, her own brand through, through wine and painting, uh, <laughs> right? To through, 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 through Chris giving some uh, some inspiration. And then King Chris uh, and Yvonne also getting through the college trap, yeah. right? So the college trap making her think that, hey, I'm going to get a six-figure job as I come out of it, and it's all going to fall on my lap just by me going mm-hmm. to a good college, right? Come from a good home. And then you got King Chris making it through the college trap with his 1.6 GPA, <laughs> um, <laughs> leveraging yeah. sports, mm-hmm. meeting the corner trap, Facts. Try hustling a few times, right? And that could have, mind you, one of those moves hustling exactly. could have got your head blown off, yep. could have got you in prison, yep. could have got you on all kinds of cha- whole trajectory of your life change from right. one bad sale, from from one anything. You could have been a good dope boy. Exactly. Made your first sale, made $100,000. You're like, yo, I'm lit. This I'm is in. it. Yeah. Right? And, right. and get you sucked into the corner trap, which is what happened to me, happened to many of us. You made that first good sale, and you find out, well, I'm quite good at this. Right. And, <laughs> and, and life changes, right? right? So Chris beat the corner trap by being a bad drug dealer. Um, <laughs> by sucking by that selling, drug. selling drugs. <laughs> right? I sucked at selling drugs. Right? And beat the corner trap. And then went through college, um, again, back to the corporate job, right? Working yeah. for Pepsi, yeah. being a good salesman, top 1% of 1% in, in sales, but then also realizing that he's building up the Pepsi company and the last name associated with that company, but not his own, then got into entrepreneurship. And then, you know, here we are, Reclaim Karma, right? Um, major uh, boutique, but major brand right. in a design and, in a design and build space. And I think there's a lot of gems that everyone can pull from your life. And one is... You, um, that I take from this is you don't know what you don't know. Right. And you don't know what the universe, God, Allah, Jehovah, Jah, however you see him, her, or it. You don't know what it has in store for you and even the bad things that happen, even a contractor running off was really a blessing. Right. Right? Like even those things, right? Even the, the stress you were going through that said, hey, baby, go paint was a blessing, right? Even seeing that pallet on the side of the road was a blessing. Even shooting your shot not knowing what you're doing, taking risk. Yeah. Many of us want to beat the trap, but we don't want to take no risk. Got to take risk. Right? You took a risk by saying, yes, 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 we know what we're doing, we did that, and then figuring it out. Sometimes you got to let, you got to give the universe an opportunity to actually um, advocate on your behalf. Right. Right? I'm keep looking at your hat. I'm seeing that circle of, 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 yeah, of, that's the, what it's about, bro. of the karma. It's the universal yeah. ecosystem, Absolutely. right? And, and doing the right thing. So that's my simple um, trap analysis, right. right, on what you all have have been through, what we all can kind of pull from that story. Nah, right. bro, because, like, if you are not believing in yourself, bro, you don't believe in God. Mm. Don't the word say, ye are gods, mm. and you can't create? So if you don't believe in yourself that you can manifest it and bring it forward, then you need to check your faith, bro. Facts. And then I always say, um, you can't have faith without having faith. Right. That's Everybody want to claim like you got faith, but you don't got faith. Exactly. Right. If you're saying it's all good, God got me, God got it's all everything happens for a reason. If you, right. if you say all of that, right. then you actually gotta buy and live and live right. it in real life. I right. think the one thing though that we that we recognize also is that like we always believe that something good is coming our yes. mm. coming our way. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Number one, we always try to do the right, the right thing by any means. Right. right? So, so we it's always easier for you to believe that. Absolutely. Yeah, out. it's yeah. always coming our way, man. Um but we also understand there's some work that's got to be put in behind that also. It's not mm. just about just believing in it. Faith without works is dead. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, you got to put in 
the work. And so that's one thing that we we do know is that what we don't know, we'll outwork to, to get it. Right. You know, we got to stay up five days straight, which is not healthy. We don't <laughs> promote that. But sometimes it, it take what it take. Right. You know what I'm saying? To to, to get there, bro. So right. Absolutely. Yeah. All right, so as we as we enter the trap seat um, for you all, um, I want to first talk about your trap transitions, right? Mm. So, um, uh, individually, was there an aha moment, like you know, just kind of that moment where your conscience spoke to you, or something happened that you knew, like this is my time to transition right from Pepsi, right, mm-hmm. out of that trap, or for you know, uh, for you Yvonne, knowing that, like you know, said like from network marketing, like you know what. I see I got a way out of just mm-hmm. running in this in this in this kind of same race and circle. Was any uh, special aha moments? Gosh, I've had a few aha know, moments, yeah. right? I think my first aha moment was walking into my first job and realizing this is not exactly what I thought it was going to be. You know, I I you fooled me. Yeah. Yes, Bait you know. Yeah. <laughs> absolutely. So I think that was the first aha moment. Like, wow, this this may not be my path forever. Even though I spent all this money on my degree, this may not be my path forever. Um, I think my next aha moment was I remember getting reprimanded and written up by my employer because I came to her to talk to her about how I thought there was a better way to do something at our job to help the men and women that Mm -hmm. I was working with. And I remember thinking to myself, really, the problem is not them. It's, uh, you know, the employers, it's me. Like, Mm -hmm. I'm unemployable. Like, I need to move on. (laughs) Like, like I'm getting written up for... I know. I'm like, I'm I'm getting written up because I have too much to add to what they're doing and I have too many ideas and I feel like there's other ways to... um, You know, yeah. And I knew that I needed to get out. Um, I think with network marketing, the aha moment was I was spending all of this time I know it was supposed to be building my dreams, but I was married and I had an entrepreneur standing right next to me and I knew that we could build our dreams together. So Mm. I think I had that moment where it was like, you know, am I going to move to one more new company and promote another new product or am I going to start promoting our product, which is us and our family and what we can build together, you know? So I think those were kind of my aha moments. Um, And I think the last aha moment was um, we, when we got that notice back from, from the DIY network, Mm. and they said that at that moment in time, it was, it may not have been the right time for Chris and I to be on that channel Mm -hmm. because the demographics may not um, be, it wasn't the right demographics at that time for us to be it on the channel. Fault. It was my fault. So, Too black, you black. You know, know what I'm saying? So it was, you know, and I remember <laughs> feeling horrible and I remember crying because we had spent like a year pulling this together for this channel. And Chris saying to me, what are you talking about? What are you crying about? This is like the best commercial ever. This is the first step towards us having something on our terms. We don't want to do a show like this on someone else's terms. We want to be authentically us. And if they're not ready for authentically us, that, you know, that we need to, that obviously something else is coming. We'll cut our own album. Right. Yes, you know, you the label don't want us. Let's go cut our own album. Right. That, that's that corporate trap, though. Yeah, the corporate trap will make you think, dumb down who you are, right. change who you are. We're this big corporation that offers you all these benefits. Right. Don't be free. Right. Right. But right. be a subordinate right. under what we have built. Right. Yep. Yeah. Awesome stuff. So, yeah. yeah. How about you, Chris? Um, man. Number one, shouts out Kenny Green. Everybody from Marriott, they know who that is. Pulling me to the side, right, and and saying like, bro, you. You're not made for this. You know, like that was, that was, because I didn't see myself like that, right? I just saw like that was the path. That's what's around in my environment. Yeah. You Shout know? out to all the OGs out there, man, that like, you know, instead of sucking the young boys in, that, you know, point them in the right direction. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for yeah, sure. Yeah. So that was one that put me on a good trajectory to get out of that scenario. Um, definitely my son, like, 
taking him outside, bro, for the first time and him seeing the sky and like him like, what the hell is that? Right. You know what I'm saying? World? <laughs> yeah. You know, you like, bro, like his life depends on what I do. Okay, let's get that, let's get that right, right? So then at Pepsi, I remember pulling a pallet of drinks. I was at a Walmart, man, and for whatever reason, like everything slowed down. I don't, it just got vision just got slow. People like were moving in slow motion. And I was like, yo, everybody here is a dollar sign. Mm. Everybody came to this place to give their money, to give their energy to this one entity. I need to be that entity. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Because either you on the offense or you on the I'm defense on the wrong side of the equation. with your money. Right. You know what I'm saying? I need to have something to where people are trying to give me money. Mm. So that was the first time I realized, like, yeah, working for somebody else is not, is not it. And then the last moment was when I got those accolades, right? Top 1% of the 1%. The vice president told me to interview for this position. And the two people behind the desk that I interviewed told me I interviewed too perfect. And they said, <laughs> they said you were perfect. It was like everything you we needed to say, we asked you to say it was perfect. It was just like it was too polished. It's like, yeah. what? And then I start realizing, like, you know, there was different little programs and people just moving past me. You know, I right. moved into, I took a step back and moved into a whole nother role with the organization and built an account up like 200% every single year for like four years mm. and couldn't get a promotion. It's like, I'm not supposed to be here, bro. Ain't for me. I'm not supposed to be and, here. And that's the other blessing. If they would have gave you the promotion, I would have got, got stuck that, in. you yes. got sucked in the trap. Right. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. Meanwhile, we was doing like, you know, caught a million at a two car garage right. on the side, you know, right. <laughs> with furniture and other stuff, you know. So I'm like, it just it got to a point where it's just like, yo, it's it's, I'm not supposed to be here, right? Yeah. That's so those dope. those are my aha that's moments. Dope. trap transition. All right, so now we're in the trap seat, and let's talk about trap blown, right? So trap mm-hmm. blown is, uh, we need you guys to tell us a story that either is something amazing, something like that blows our mind that you can't even believe happened, which is half what you already just half told us, it, yeah. or something that is um, embarrassing, mm. shameful, yeah. <laughs> or regrettable that you guys have been through. You're like, you know what? I'm going to blow myself up a little bit. Something I don't really tell everybody, but uh, I would take that one back if I could. <laughs> Be vulnerable. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, I already said quite a few embarrassing things. I got a bunch of scholarships because I am an other. Race hustling. (laughs) Race hustling. (laughs) I mean, that's probably not something to be so proud of that I got these scholarships when I don't know if my nationality is actually those nationalities. Um, That's pretty scandalous. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Um, But they couldn't prove I wasn't. So, you know, in my defense. But um, I don't know. It's something really... Terrible, embarrassing. I don't really You're know safe. anything. I know. <laughs> yeah. I am safe, except for marrying you. That was know. a little risque. You know, know. You know, know. that was a little scandalous that I scandalous. I guess you know, <laughs> like a probation officer marrying somebody that's on probation. Like, you know, who does that? Like, besides yeah, me, so like a ton of gatekeepers yeah. that got love relationships. Right, with the you know, <laughs> it goes down. You know, yeah. Um, but I would say one thing that I am proud of, because Chris, I'm sure, will give you something embarrassing. So I'll give maybe something I'm <laughs> proud of. But I am proud that I wake up every single morning and I literally work with like my best friend. Not everybody can work with their spouse and work wow. with them well, like 24 hours I out of the day. So I'm, tell you. I'm definitely <laughs> proud of the business that we've built. I'm super proud of every one of our huge accomplishments. I'm proud that we started talking last year about really getting a presence on the internet and content creating and working with large brands. I am super proud of the accomplishments and the income that we've been able to bring in this year mm-hmm. um, doing that. We did that taxes. Um, Don't tell nobody. I know. Where. Yeah. <laughs> so, and I am, um, and I'm just really, I'm proud of where our business is at and all of the huge things that we've, you know, we've done, you know, and the connections yeah. that we've made and, 
you know, I mean, who would have thought we would be here sitting with you, somebody uh, that Chris was laying in the bed reading about, and now we're in here actually working. renovating the space yeah. and being well, able to be interviewed by you. Yeah. I think that's pretty awesome. Yeah. And I'm able to sit next to my best friend and and do all of those things. That's amazing. Yeah. Look at yeah. y'all all, you know, all for black love. <laughs> hey, amazing. I know. Okay, Chris, what you got for us? Oh, so, um, <laughs> honestly, I don't, I don't, man, yeah, I've probably got a lot of things. <laughs> a lot of embarrassing things. I think the one thing that, that, that I beat myself up about it a lot, hmm. right, is um, when we did the Black House, right, hmm. and I had an opportunity to speak in front of everybody. Oh, it's this? I took most of the credit. I, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I said that it was, you know, me and my wife, but it was a lot of people behind the scenes, bro, that I didn't put mm. in the forefront. Yeah, you So I regret that, that, you, that you man. Was, yeah. That it still eats me up to this day. You know, like, Daryl was there. I didn't bring forth Daryl. Like, he didn't want the credit, but I mean, but still, you know, it's like, right. you don't do anything by yourself. Right. You know right. what I'm saying? And so I You're think like, I don't want that karma to hit me. I don't want that karma to hit me. I don't even karma. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, but yeah, it's just I don't know, man. I just I feel bad about not bringing forth the team behind mm. me. You know what I'm saying? And mm. putting them up up front That's because honorable. yeah, we 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 are not where we are right now, and we got a long ways to go. Wow. And it's gonna take other people with us, mm-hmm. help us, give us a shot. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And it's like. You got to give people their roses. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yep. So thank you also for giving us the opportunity because I know you went through our page and you was like, bro, they don't do this. <laughs> <laughs> we do this. Right. Yeah. <laughs> they did it. Yeah. Y'all did it. Yeah. Real you know? life. Yeah. yeah. So that's that's that. And I would say one of the, um, uh, it's like, thing I'm most, that's kind of shocking that has happened to us is I was just on the history channel. <sighs> I forgot wow. about that. I was just on the History that, Channel. Yeah, tell me about that. Yeah, so I, I was I hosted um, an episode for the History of Power Tools, mm-hmm. and I was a co-host with some check you some out nice hitters on there, bro. Modern Modern Builds. Yeah, so I was on an episode of Modern Builds. They reached out and was like, "Yo, we need some different kind of flavor, different energy mm-hmm. to come." And that's amazing, man. Yeah, it's like, inspiration. You're talking about what 2015, 2016, just getting started. Yeah, yeah. Re- refurbishing some, mm-hmm. yeah, old wood mm-hmm. and furniture. First <laughs> YouTube know. video building a coffee table to major networks, yeah. GYI, mm-hmm. Home Depot series, yeah. History Channel. Yeah, I mean, this is man, like this. Yeah. Everybody, like, no one should be sitting home listening to this or watching this and have a dream. And no not way. be encouraged, just be sitting on your drink. Facts. You don't know how it's going to unfold. Like this is like this is like super uh, inspirational. I think really also what you guys do. Cause I know you personally, how you guys interact as a couple. I'm sure it's not perfect. You know, no marriage in, in relationship is, but you guys. Um, Today we're good. We're yeah, we have a good day. <laughs> Y'all work well together. Y'all work well. Thank you. Um, and, and that's definitely also encouraging and great example as well. That, that, that's awesome. Yeah, y'all, y'all beating a couple trap. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes. That is, yeah. You know, because a lot of times, man, you can look at your spouse. You can be jealous of your spouse. You can be... All that. Mm-hmm. You, can, you can have resentment towards your spouse. Oh, and, tell me and about it. Mm-hmm. can't get over those. <laughs> things. I can't. <laughs> can't get over those things so that y'all can build together, you know what I'm saying? Right, right. And we still, like, you know, like, she's a safer one. I'm more of a yeah. risk taker, you know? Um, mm-hmm. Even now, you know, like, hearing the last guy, you know what I'm saying, spend 35000 you know, on training, you know? Yeah. I'm ready. I'm ready to get to that. I don't know if I want to spend 35000 right. <laughs> But reinvesting in ourselves to propel us to the next level, like, you got to pay. Yeah. You got to pay in order to get to the abundance. next level, bro. Yeah, you got to think abundance. And believe in it, yeah. You can't, you can't mm. think scarcity, for sure. Yeah. Mm. All right, so as we come to um, our close, man, um, we want you guys <laughs> to give us, for the, the multiple traps you guys be, um, speaking either to your younger selves or someone that might be facing that uh, corporate trap or that college trap, mm-hmm. um, what is, or a corner trap for that matter, Chris, uh, what is uh, a trap cheat sheet, a piece of advice that you would give someone, like, listen, if you're going up against this, 
Um, if you're in a job, you're talking about promotion, if you got the promotion in the job, right? It's not wrong. We need employees, you mm-hmm. need jobs. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But for everyone to be thinking about their legacy, um, whether it be in the corporate side or again, whether it be in the college side, can you guys give us um, at least one trap cheat sheet gem of something that, uh, you know, someone who might be facing that or you might tell your even younger self going into college or even out of college mm-hmm. that they can maybe follow to help avoid the trap? Mm-hmm. Good one. I think the first thing I think about is like your mindset. I think in college, they don't teach about your mindset. They don't teach you that if you invest in yourself, there's so much further that you could go. Um, I tell Chris that there's a book called The Dream Giver by Bruce Wilkerson that literally, if I would have read that book back when I was starting college, I think I would have had a little bit of an aha moment back then because it's a real short book. It's a real easy read, Mm. but it talks about somebody who's trying to go from ordinary land to extraordinary land while everybody is in ordinary land with them and doesn't want them to go Mm. to extraordinary land. And I think I didn't even realize back then that there was extraordinary land to go to. Mm. And I really think that if my mindset had been right, if I could tell myself back then to be investing in my mindset and self-development and that I can invest in myself, that college is an awesome tool you know, and there's a lot you learn in college, but that that may not be your path forever. Mm-hmm. People sometimes change routes all, you know, all the time. And it's okay right. that your journey that you think you're going to go into in college or right after school may not be the same journey that you're leading yourself into in your mid-20s or your mid-30s or your mid-40s. That it's okay to change routes. Mm. Awesome, awesome. Right. Trap cheat sheet, trap yeah. cheat sheet. A um, couple of things come to my mind is, uh, to my younger self, is I just heard uh, uh, an OG say this the other day that put it into perspective of what I didn't understand. Like, my passion was music, radio, but I needed it, like, now. I needed it fast. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And so he said something that the fastest way to get to where you want to go is slowly. Ooh. Mm. Said, trap yo. bar. Said, yo. Trap bars. <laughs> Man, That's if I would just place. stay the course, right? You know, you just stay the course. Um, and then um, looking at David Shans' um, uh, podcast also. Shout out David Shans. Dope dude. Shansy. Yeah. Sleeping for suckers. Yeah. He was interviewing uh, Myron Golden. And he said, what you're working on is working on you. Mm. And it's impossible for work not to work. Like, you just got to keep doing the work. Mm. You know what I'm saying? It's like, man, if if my younger self would have known that, I would have just kept staying the course on certain things. I mean, I, I'm you're always supposed to be where you're at. we at, you know. But there's always a couple of different paths that you could have taken also. It's impossible for work not to work. work. You got to keep working on the work. Right. You know, it's like man, a lot of times they give up on the work. Yeah, the magnifying glass, right? It take a minute for that thing to catch fire, but if you keep moving it, right. you don't give the sun enough time to to do what it do what it does. You know, right. um, and then what we always say now is we can't be afraid to lose, right? Oh. Say yes, take a shot. You fail, you learn so much from when you mess up, right? You know, so I tell my son all the time, man, go f up, go. Go do it, you know, because right. when you when you mess up, you bust your head, you learn, okay, that's how you don't yep. do it. <laughs> well, what mistake, I should have I'm closer did. now to the goal. Exactly. Right. Yeah. And so if you don't shoot your shot, you don't, you don't mm-hmm. ever make a shot, right? Mm-hmm. And then what we say to ourselves all the time is you gotta give yourself some grace, man. Yes. Give yourself some grace. You know, like you're not supposed to know everything. You can't please everybody. You can't be everywhere. And just because you can do everything don't mean you should be doing everything. Mm. So you got to give yourself some grace because if you keep beating yourself up, man, it, it'll take a toll on your life, bro. Right. You know? Yeah, you got to be where you're at in life is where you should be at in, in, in life. And you can always change that trajectory, man. So just give yourself some grace because as long as you can wake up the next day, you can make a change the next day. Yeah, we often hold ourselves to a standard of perfection. It's like, bro, we know, we say we know we're not perfect. Right. 
But why do we keep holding ourselves to a standard of right. perfection? Exactly. Right? So, yeah, no, I love that. Appreciate you all for real. Thank um, you, please bro. tell our audience uh, where they can find you all, uh, follow you, support you, um, any upcoming initiatives, all that. You can find us everywhere Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, Pinterest, hmm. Reclaimed Karma. That's R E C L A I M E D K A R M A. Reclaim Karma. Reclaim Karma. You can find them here at the Black House, finishing up yes. this phase two, yeah. 20,000 square foot all purpose space, going. production mm-hmm. space that's down. about to go down. Um, so much uh, intricacies going to uh, a building this size. Mm-hmm. Uh, project management, we know moving parts, technology, HVAC, flooring, plumbing, Man. electric, it's big design, boy. It's big boy stuff. Yep, it's uh, It's big boy stuff that's uh, happening right it's now. It's going to be hot. It's going to yes. be super hot. You this thought the front everybody. was hot. The back's going to be hot. Fight. So, yeah. 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 I can't wait. Mm-hmm. It's going to be wait. some millionaires made right here, too. That's yep. right. You know what I'm saying? Treff life. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right, hey. man. Thank you guys so much for all this uh, coming and bracing the trap today and bringing such an uh, amazing energy to the trap. Uh, yep. Again, you guys are already epitome of beating a couple's trap. I'll tell you that right now. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right. So all couples, you need to be tied in like, baby, this is how we should be doing it. Yeah. Right? That's what it should be. And let me say this on record, bro. Like, we appreciate you, man. We love mm-hmm. you. We appreciate, um, you, you know, us giving us opportunities, man. Mm-hmm. But also just watching you from afar of everything that you went through, your health conditions, um, you know, your family, mm-hmm. things that's going on with Kobe and whatnot, man. Um, but then also being able to sustain yourself while you get shots on your character about what's happening here. Mm-hmm. You know, you stay in the course, man, and, and just I've seen you develop and open up and pivot and change, you know what I'm saying? And so shouts out to you for that, bro. Thank you, know? you brother. Yeah. yeah. That's that life thing. You Facts. know what I mean? That's that life thing. And just just really, really rolling through life and um, mm-hmm. you know, growing and learning and all that. But you guys have been great friends, great support, but like, you know, just right. that ecosystem. So keep life in life. You. That's right. Keep life in life. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Keep life in life. That's it. All right, man, guys. Um, you already know we um are now uh leaving the trap just for a moment. We'll see you back on our next episode of How to Beat the Trap. Reclaim Karma just came in and just gave us like six trap bars, cheat sheets, lessons, and all that. Be inspired. Take action. Um, uh, what was that saying you say? You said in order for life to work, you got to work. What was that? Oh, you can't work. What do you say? It's, it's impossible for work not to work. It's impossible for work not to work. Yeah. That was a super major trap yeah. bar. Yeah. And the other one, I love is the OG said. Yeah, the fastest way to get to where you want to go is slow. slow. Yes. Man, the fastest way to get to where you want to go is slow. Take your time. Take your you time. got this. All right. See you guys on the next episode. Peace. Hey, Peace family. It's Jay Morrison, co-founder of the Legacy Center here in Atlanta, Georgia. And I want to invite you all to be a virtual member of our building, our Class A office space, also known as the Black House. From anywhere in the world, you can house your business here in Atlanta, Georgia, and have your virtual address be our address. Get your own suite number. You also can get our virtual notary services, our virtual receptionist services, have a telephone line for your team, and get access to our meeting rooms, conference rooms, and get one day per month to actually visit our building and house your business here in real life. Family, this opportunity is just $40 per month or $300 for the year. Super discount for you to be able to have a Class A office space house your business address two miles from Tyler Perry Studio, five minutes from the world's busiest airport right here in amazing Atlanta, Georgia at LegacyCenter.com.